glory. Praise the name of Jesus. Do things uh, a little different tonight. <coughs> I, uh, I had a scripture to read, and then when I was standing back there, uh, I'm not one to uh, go into the book of Revelation a whole lot, uh, preaching, uh, but uh, I ran across the scripture here in uh, the book of Revelation, and uh, I'm going to read the scripture. I think it's very fitting, um, especially... Uh, next Sunday, looking forward to Sunday morning, uh, and invite some people to come out Sunday morning uh, and, and, and hear uh, our pastor teach a little bit, and uh, when I run across the scripture, it kind of just fell right into right into the place and preparing for Sunday morning, and uh, if you have your Bibles and will, turn with me to Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14. It's in the way back to your Bible. Chapter what? 14. Chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14. Start in verse 6. Revelation 14, verse 6. It says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them who dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people. Verse 7, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him. For the hours of his judgment is come. And worship him who made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. You may be seated. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them who dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. The, the same gospel message that was preached over in the book of Hebrew, the, the, the gospel of, of uh, grace, the gospel of, of uh, Jesus Christ and him crucified, is the same gospel that they're going to be preaching uh, when, when, when the return of the Lord comes and when Babylon falls. But that, I, want, I want to just touch on this just for a few minutes, and then I really want to focus on the next scripture. But, but what they're referring to is they're going to preach this message to every nation because we know that in his word that it tells us that, that, that he's not going to return until every nation has, has had a chance. Until everyone on the earth has had a chance, he's not going to return, right? You've got to make that choice before he'll return. And so Amen. this we're talking about the Lord has returned, and now the people that dwell <clears throat> left on the earth, the ones that are left behind, he's preaching the message to them, Right? And, and again, I'm not going to go into the whole detail. I want to focus on the next scripture. But if you want to read it and, and you think you're ready, go, go in there and read it. If, you, if, you don't, if you're not 100% sure, I advise you to start in the Gospels and go from there. Don't go any further yet. But, but the, the next scripture is really, really where I want to start. I stay, I stay at. Saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him. And then it says, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him who made heaven, earth, and sea, and the fountains of water. Now, if you go back and you read the whole story, and again, I, I don't normally get, a, get into the book of Revelation a whole lot because 90% of the church isn't ready for the book of Revelation yet. That's just my opinion. Uh, but but in this part, we're talking about that the Lord has returned. Babylon has already fell. The Antichrist is setting up his territory. All right? And so you'll see here that he that here this angel is, and 
is saying, you know, say with a loud voice, which what happens when someone says something with a loud voice? They want to get your attention. They want you to hear them. Mm -hmm. It says, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. Mm -hmm. And then in the very next scripture, it says, worship mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Can I just tell you this? If you can't worship him now, if you get left behind, you'll never worship him then. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. If you're left behind and you can't live this life now and, and you can't worship him now with the little bit of trials and tribulation that we face, uh, then God forbid that you get left behind because you'll never be able to worship him then. That's true. What are you saying? I'm saying that it's time we start worshiping. Mm -hmm. Amen. I think it's very, I don't believe in coincidences when it comes to, to God's word or, or anything that he has to do for that nature. But I think it's very fitting for, for the next uh, several weeks uh, that, that this scripture just happens to make its way into uh, my face tonight. Because the, the thing is, do we even understand what worship is? That's right. Come on. I'm not going to tell you tonight. I'm just asking you, do you understand what worship is? Yes. We, first of all. Yes. We need to have fear for God. Amen. And you'll notice that when, when the angels flying around spreading the gospel, one of the first things that they say is fear God. That's right. Yes. Praise the Lord. Because if we don't fear God, I feel sorry for you. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because in order for us, listen, it's not a fear. You know, you say, oh, well, the Bible tells us to, to, that he doesn't give us a, a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. That's concerning the things that we face on a daily basis. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. We need to fear God because if we have fear for someone, that means we respect and reverence them. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's good. The church has lost a lot of their fear. Yes. <laughs> They've lost a lot of their fear because what happens is we get into a situation, we become so complacent that we feel so comfortable that because of the message of grace, because of that message, we get so comfortable that we lose our fear. Amen. And we lose our reverence. Yeah. And, and I know we touched a little bit on this Sunday night, but... I, again, I, I just I find it amazing that the, that the, they come out tonight. But we need to get the fear of God back in the church to where we can give Him the glory that He deserves. There you go. Yes. Amen. And, and to where, because understand this, the hour of judgment is here. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. The hour of judgment is here. Right. In, in the last three, let's see, today is Wednesday, so... Five days. In the last five days, I've went from here to here with things that just have blown my mind. Amen. Have just completely blown my feeling. mind. I was watching a guy on TV today. His name's Jimmy Evans. I don't know if you've ever seen him. He's televangelist, but... Whether you like him or dislike him or agree with him or disagree with him, he was saying some things today about some end time prophecy. I'm not a big end time prophecy guy, that's not my calling. Uh, but he was saying some things about uh, biblical timelines. And, and if you go back and you kind of put it all together, it kind of made sense to me. I don't know whether he's right or wrong. But if that's the case, I want you to understand where we're living at today. He says that we're living in, in, in the 6,000 year since the beginning of time. We've been on the earth 2,000 years. There was 4,000 years in between, you know, there when, when God created the heaven and earth. So here we are in the 6,000 year. I don't know about you, but if you take two and divide it into six, it comes three times. Mm -hmm. There's a series of three twos for you, Beth. The hour of judgment has come. Amen. And it starts in the house of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. How does it start? Fear. We have to fear God. 
If the church, let me tell you something right now. If this world truly thought that he was returning tonight, you couldn't get anybody else in the church. We would be standing wall to wall, shoulder to shoulder. Everybody would be crying out for every with everything they had in them. We've done knock the bridge down because people would be parked on the bridge. It would have done fell in the creek out there. We would have done shut the road down because cars would be parked on. And every single church in the valley, not just here, every they they get into the, the, the churches, the first church they come across, they get inside of them. Yes, they would. If people truly feared God. Yeah. The way that we should. Amen. Why are you saying all this? Because of New Life Holiness Church? It's the truth. It's coming. That's right. Amen. It's coming. Amen. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. No, this, and, and this is, uh, you, you, it's not a prophetic word, it's just the truth. God's not going to let anybody stand in the way. Mm -mm. So you can either get on board now or be prepared to get out of the boat. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You don't board or get out of the boat. You say, that's kind of harsh. <laughs> Wait till the Lord's Jesus. judgment shows up. That's right. Wait till the wrath of God shows up. Uh, Amen. We need to Praise get that fear Lord. back. Glory. I've been Hallelujah. scared to death recently. I've prayed more in the last five days than I've prayed in my life. Amen. Amen. I'm serious. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm serious. I've scared more scriptures, shared more scriptures on trash put in the last five days than I've shared with anybody. Come on, brother. You don't look at my Facebook Amen. page. I ain't lying. Am I lying? Mm -mm. Y'all look at my Facebook page. I've shared in scripture. I'm scared. You say, why are you scared? I'm not scared because I know that I'm covered by his blood and I know that I'm on my way. But listen, it's not that. I'm scared for this church. I'm scared for the other ones that are not ready. I'm scared for the ones that are playing games who say they're ready and they're portion of him, worshiping him with their lips, but their hearts are far from it. I'm scared for the ones that are coming in the church house and making a mockery of God. I'm scared for the ones that are standing behind the pulpit uh, calling themselves men and women of God uh, and standing up here preaching lies uh, and yes. giving the lies out yes. uh, and they're going to be judged. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Bless him, Lord. That's what I'm scared for. I don't ever want to be in that position. Me neither. Mm -mm. And can Praise I just be honest? Lord. Praise the Lord. Sliding backwards. Let's be honest. Thank you, Jesus. We've had this conversation. Come on, brother. I've done enough to, to get by with. I've done enough studying to be able to come in here prepared to give a message. Mm -hmm. I've done enough studying to be able to know that, yeah, this is what the Lord wants us to have tonight. Mm -hmm. Yes. I've done enough praying to get me by. I ain't fasted. Well, and I couldn't tell you how long. Why? Because we've lost our fear. Yes. Uh -huh. We've lost our fear. Yes. We've lost our worship. We've lost our praise. Yes, Lord, it's time to get it back. We don't fear God. Thank you, Jesus. The way that we're supposed to fear. Yes, Lord. It says, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him. Can I just tell you where it says the hours of judgment has come? That if you go in the book of Revelation and read about the plagues that's going to be poured on this earth. Mm. <clears throat> yep. In the book of Revelation. Mm. I feel sorry for sinners. That's, that's what we're talking about here. Then if you go on down where it says, And worship him who made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Chances are, it's because the Antichrist is claiming the power. Yes. See, the Bible tells us that the very elect will be deceived. Glory if possible. Yeah. 
They'll be deceived if possible. And so when the Antichrist comes back, and the Antichrist comes back and he begins to say, oh, look what I've done, look what I've done. People that, that don't have the fear of God, that don't have that relationship with God, it'll be those people that are deceived. And they'll worship the Antichrist. And so this is where the angel is saying, hey, wait a minute. You need to worship the one who made the heaven and the earth. That's right, amen. You need to worship the one who made the sea and the fountains of waters. Amen. I'll finish with this. It says, And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. Is fallen the great city because she, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. If you go back and study it out, Babylon was one of the first sites who rebelled against God. <laughs> if you go back and study it out in the Bible and look at the, look at the story of Babylon, it was one of the very first sites that rebelled against God. One of the very first sites. Where's our fear? Where's our praise? Come on. Do you want to be left behind? Mm -hmm. Do you want to go through this? Mm -hmm. I don't want to go through it. But need I remind you what it tells us in the book of Matthew? Straight is the gate and narrow is the way. Mm -hmm. Amen. And few, few will be found there. Now, if you take into consideration the hundreds of thousands of maybe millions of people that call themselves Christians, how many will a few be? I don't know. But how many is a few out of this church? How many is a few out of the people that's here tonight? I'm glad. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. You can't have I think so salvation. You gotta have an I know so salvation. Amen. You gotta have Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I'm not I'm not much on secular music right now, but it's no it's no it's no wonder that in the secular world there's a there's a highway to hell and a stairway to heaven. Even the Amen. even the secular world Amen. knows. <coughs> even the devil knows oh, that there's hallelujah. only a short time left. So here comes the good part. I'm going to give every one of you a chance tonight to praise God. Yeah. Yeah, amen. I'm going to give every one of you a chance tonight to worship God. I'm not going to force you, but what I'd like to do is start right here in the corner with Joe Bob over here, and I'd like everybody in the church to stand up and testify. I can't force you to do this. That's just what I'd like to see happen. Go ahead. I'm glad you One day, you reached out and picked that old boy up. Yeah. Say, hey, I'm sorry. First time I always appreciated him. Because he's been real all my life. He's all I need to. And I expect him to go home to me. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. Bless your heart. That was good, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All right, what about you, Lester? You want to testify tonight? 